Welcome back to the It's Bigger Than Me podcast. I'm your host, Molly Trotter Gomez. Very excited for our guest today. I met this lovely woman on Facebook. And you know, when you meet somebody, you're like, we're just in that same vein. We love people getting into their purpose. We love being able to help kingdom-minded women and just really being able to use the gifts that we've been given to then go and help other people step into what God's calling them to step into. So I'm very excited to introduce Ashley Stone here on the show. And Ashley, before we dive into a little bit more about what you're working on, which is called Pretty in Praise, and I'll let you share a lot more of what's behind that. Um, I would love for you to be able to introduce yourself so the folks at home can get to know you a little bit more. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. I love when I get to meet people like through social media and be like, oh, we are just one in the same. So um, social media is so powerful in that way. And so to say what I do, um, basically one of my businesses is it's a media company and we actually get people seen online. So we work with small businesses and I do uh, marketing and brand development for social media and for uh, websites. And so essentially, um, that's my professional kind of deal. But I'm a serial entrepreneur. I own multiple businesses. And I just love, I love loving on women. Like I just love helping them with where they are um, to develop as business owners and as entrepreneurs. And so um, it just was natural for me to also launch a nonprofit that focuses on developing women. I love that. So tell me a little bit about, obviously, you know, with your media brand, you get to help a lot of people. You get to see the the ins and outs of, of people so you can really understand what their brand is about. Like yeah. why why a nonprofit to, to help people, um, women specifically, grow in their faith through trauma? Because that was a little bit more of what Pretty and Praise is all about. Like why that specifically? So for me, it's always been about storytelling. Like I'm a writer. I love to read. I've always been a storyteller myself. I always loved kind of sharing the behind the scenes of being an entrepreneur and just life, lifing. I feel like oftentimes with social media, um, you only see the highlight reel and you don't really see like all the nitty gritty of what it takes when you're, an, when you're an entrepreneur. But with that, what I found is my own personal story and journey was me like pursuing entrepreneurism because it was a it was a great distraction because I had experienced traumas myself and that was like my coping skill and like my way of finding my worth was building things developing things businesses and um and so with that when I started to do that for other people with helping them on their businesses I realized behind the scenes a lot of people were also struggling as well and they were operating from a place of just burnout and then also just not really um not really. They they love their passion. They love the people that they were doing uh, the works for, but they re- weren't really um, like their own worth was kind of put into those things. If that makes sense, like everything was outside of them, and they were running on fumes. Yes. And so I just found that one. I loved showcasing the storytelling of what they do because there's so much passion behind so many small businesses, but. When you start to learn the stories, there's usually this underbelly of things and experiences of why they do what they do. And they serve the people because often they didn't have, you know, those things that they created or they didn't have those people to support them. So they became those supporters of others. And I just loved that. And at the same time, I was like, there's there's more to this that needs healing. And and the same goes for myself. And so um, through my own healing journey, I actually um, discovered God. I had a really profound moment. I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't grow up with um, Jesus. And so when I um, found Jesus in my late 30s, um, I was just like, oh, my gosh, do people know about this guy? Like, I just wanted yes. to story. I just wanted to tell that experience and, and really what he did for me with healing me. And it made me show up different as an entrepreneur. It made me show up different as a leader. And so Pretty and Praise became this like natural segue that God put on my heart to do, which was um, really connect with people that experience trauma to know their worth and know that they are, you know, still worthy. They still, you know, are loved and all of those things. And then when you know that you just show up different in life and in business and all of that. And so the two kind of just happened in some ways. Um, there, it makes complete sense for me to pursue in other ways. I'm like, God, what are we doing? Like, (laughs) this is what I'm doing with this. Um, and so it's been this really meandering journey where I've, you know, thought it was one way, but he showed me different and I've been really just working it out and walking it out. I love that. I mean, what, what a beautiful story of, you know, coming to know Jesus later, later in life, right. In your thirties. And you're like, Hey, everybody needs to know this. And you being, 
um, just, I guess you could say an obsessive storyteller. Cause when you're in media, like that's what it is. We get to share stories. We get to really cast the vision, paint the picture as to what people are doing, what they're passionate about, all the things. And so I can only imagine when you first got started of like, look at this, because so many people want to be able to hear your experience. And maybe your experience is the one that really gets them to see things differently. Right. Um, and right. so when it comes to, you know, just as a believer, I mean, there's a lot of people that have a lot of church hurt that have grown up in the church, have, you know, heard about Jesus, but because their experience with other people, they, they are like, yeah, no, no, thank you. I'm good. Like I, I no thanks on to the next. And so I love being able to hear those stories because I always think of, you know what, there's going to be people connected to you that see you, that hear you, that you're like, there's something there and I need to know more and I get to dive in deeper. And so tell us a little bit about, you know, with Pretty and Praise, this nonprofit that you put together, really being able to, you know, share these stories, you know, are there any stories that come to mind that have just been so impactful for you since you said yes to putting this together? Because obviously, you know, stories are not just for you, but for everybody that have ears to listen that come on your podcast or come across these people that they get to hear. Yeah, what, what? A couple things surprised me. One, I didn't know what church hurt was. And so for me, it was one of those things that God just really led me to a media ministry. So being in media and doing what I do with that, it it just made complete sense why he was giving this to me in this way, because it was really like, you know, people that maybe are afraid to walk into the church or maybe they're already in the church. And these are stories and conversations they don't feel comfortable with or they don't mm -hmm. feel like um, like it's a jaded kind of thing where some people kind of turn away. And that part was actually really surprising for me because I because I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't really know. Like in my mind, I'm like, what do you mean? This is where you should be able to go and share these things while some of these traumas are happening in the church. And so that was kind of a piece that I didn't anticipate. And so the, that was probably the profound thing for me to hear um, in some of the conversations on the podcast, because I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't realize. And then at the same time, um, the conversations of the same questions like I have had, where um, if they experience trauma, and they had to make really tough decisions in that trauma. Or um, we talk about things like abortion and talk about things like, you know, addictions and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, these places where you feel like you can't go to certain places to talk about it because you're carrying shame and you're carrying guilt. And, um, you know, so it just opens that door. So a lot of the topics are really heavy. Um, and at the same time, you hear this amazing story of redemption and of grace and, and all of these things. And I think it's so necessary um, as women, because so many of us have experienced some of these conversations, these topics. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like all of them, I think across the board are, we're just getting started. So we're only on our seventh episode or in our first season. So I think there's going to be so many more things that will be uncovered. But um, with that said, it started with hearing those conversations of those business women mm -hmm. um, and realizing that there were so many people that behind closed doors were struggling. Yes. Yes. You bring up so many great points. It's, it's, it's mind boggling to know that that, like you said, the church should be the place you could come to, but there's yeah. so many that you can't or things that are going on. And, you know, and I like to say people are people, um, they fail, they are, they are flawed and yeah. that is going to happen. And so being able to understand that just because you had a bad experience somewhere, doesn't mean we put everything under that same umbrella, but that's the power of podcasting, right. Or the power of different right. movements or environments of, you know, when you can have that transparency, I I've met so many people on the outside, what they look like, you're like, Oh, they have it all together sex addiction, drug addiction, food addiction, porn addiction. I mean, like addictions of all kinds. And no one's going to be like, hey, here's my array of addictions. Pick one. Like, you know, this is a different pill for a different day. But so many people have those things. And what I have really come to learn over the years, and I used to hide this too, because I'm like, no, if they knew that part, then they're going to cancel me. It actually creates a bridge of, like you said, redemption, overcoming. I had this, but you know what? I wanted to choose a different way. And some people, they still struggle with it. And so there's a relatability there of we all go through different struggles. It doesn't make us less than or anything. It makes us human. But you know what? There are environments and there are people, there are podcasts, there are shows um, that can really be able to help us see, look, there is another way. And there, there are people that have overcome probably the same addictions and traumas and different things that you have, not to make yours less than or just, oh, everybody's gone through this, but to know that there's healing on the other side. Um, and it's funny right. that you mentioned about the the church thing and the pastor thing and all of that. Like there are uh, many people that actually talk about pastors specifically talking about um, our community and Kingdom Alliance where they're like, we can't talk about the the business side, the marketplace side, the growth side, different things in there in the church. 
but we would love to send our people to a place where they can get equipped. They can learn because for whatever reason, some pastors put church in this big old box where they're like, we can't, you know, stir up the congregation on certain things. And I'm like, if we can't talk about truth and what's actually happening, how are people supposed to know how right. to heal, navigate when they go outside those doors? So exactly. I love that you're providing that place where people can feel, okay, wow, I feel seen and heard by the voices that you're bringing on there. That's so cool. Mm, thank you. And I think the other thing is it's it's setting this like false um, narrative for success. Cause you, like, if you don't, most people that I know that are highly successful, they've kind of been through some things and they had to overcome and, and all that. And it can be a very isolating experience as well. And I feel like that's what the enemy wants to is to isolate you. And then you start building something in the wrong direction, right? You're building from a place of like unstable ground. It's, you know, going against what maybe something that you experienced and you're like, it's me against the world. And that's, what's driving you. Right. It's like not drive. It drive, can sometimes drive you in the wrong direction. And I think building from a place of stability and wholeness and, and building alongside God, like God should be involved in everything. My decision-making as a businesswoman, my, my decision-making as a mother, like he's in all parts of our lives. So he doesn't, you don't just shut the door to this one specific thing and then just say, I'm going to handle this over here. And then, you know what, now I'm back with God on Sunday. It's, it's every yeah. day for me. And so that's what like pretty in praise. And, and even what I do as a businesswoman, it's changed so much, but um, it's really like I'm doing life with him in all aspects. And, and it's the same truth that whether I'm a businesswoman or I'm in this setting or that setting behind the scenes, how I'm talking to myself, how I'm experiencing life, what I'm struggling with will eventually spill over if you don't work that out. So like it all kind of mixes in one big old box that if you don't address it and if you, you know, don't do it, you know, I feel alongside him that you're going to have almost like not this full, um, I don't know, this wholeness that, that he can bring to everything. You know, when you were saying that I had a phrase that just kind of hit me purpose doesn't mean perfect. Like so many mm -hmm. people are like, when God gives you that purpose, you're like, oh my gosh, well then I have to be perfect in this area because that's my purpose. And it's like, no, <laughs> he's like, actually, I'm going to take all the flaws that you had and all the things that you did. And I'm going to make that look, you know, however he wants to make it look. And he's going to use that because there was nobody in the Bible that comes with a clean slate. Nobody that's like, oh, look, I had it all together. Absolutely no one. Um, and the ones right. that look like they had it all together, they fell at some point and God still used that because humans are flawed. They're, we're, we're a fallen fallen being. And so he gets to use that because of his grace and his mercy. And when you are surrendered to that piece right there, just like I can tell that you are, like you get to use your your media, which is massive, right? Like you can you can reach so many people in that that business that you have. Same with your podcast. Like he will use that and use the master's multiplication when we're like, okay, God, you gave it to me. I'm giving it back to you. What do you want right. to do with it? And so um, I just, when you said that, I was like, oh, purpose doesn't mean perfect. Honestly, I probably needed that like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I probably did too, girl. It's, it's, it's a process. It's a journey. I always tell people it's, it's like such a journey. I just got saved four years ago and I've, I feel like I've been on like rapid fire ever since. Um, but it's like a process of trusting. It's a process of obedience. Like all of these, all of these different things, like, you know, then we say we're going to do life with him, but then, you know, we still insert our own ideas and our own things. And that's something I had to kind of work on even as of recently. So that word surrender is a powerful one because yes. not only do you need to surrender, but you're probably going to have to do it multiple times. It's, it's a, it's just what it is, you know, and be yes. okay with that because, you know, it doesn't look like just like a narrow straight path. It is kind of meandering and Jesus is those, those bumpers along the way. Yes. And I feel like I'm sharing this quote a lot lately. I saw this um, and I posted it like recently, but I'm like, this literally is the right now thing. And I'm going to share it again because somebody on here needs to hear this. Um, mm -hmm. When I came across this, this was so powerful. Speaking of surrender. So when you've been married to control for so long, surrender feels like a divorce. That's why it's mm -hmm. so hard. It feels mm -hmm. like you're just like ripping and shredding. So, so many of us, I feel like are feeling the ripping and the shredding, that divorce that like it's pulling apart because we've been trying to just like hold on to things for so long. But I'm sure you've experienced this too, even just being newer in your walk. It's like when you surrender, how much peace comes over you? How much like, wow, I didn't have to like pick that up hardly at all. Like God's got it. And then I'm just, my response is, you know, yes. Okay. What's next? What's next? Whenever he asks me to do something. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Honestly, it's a grieving process. And I feel like for me, like surrendering is definitely um, because it, it takes time to surrender one. And then it's a process to even 
Like it's like surrendering and then you got to surrender again. It's like each bit by bit. Um, it's like an onion. And so I feel like grieving, there's five stages to grieving. And, you know, that to me is like sometimes there's five stages to surrendering. So that's for me as of recent, I definitely just recently had this whole experience. And I finally got to this place of like acceptance. I was in my fifth stage, thankfully. But it's the the craziest thing happened as I reflected on everything. It made me realize just, again, the grace through the process and how each time he was just like, I thought I was going to, you know, the first time I made the mistake or the first time I fell off, it was like, oh, he's done with me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and you just think you're just condemned. And, you know, that was always my thought like this, you know. I don't know. Maybe that's what took me so long to come into my my faith because I had fears um, and I didn't understand. And once you just embrace it and go through that and build that relationship, it is a relationship. And like with any relationship, you know, there's flawed you know aspects of that relationship, but you still love that person. You're still there for that person. And it's the same thing with him. And so through that journey of my grieving process, like and it was just what I saw time and time again is like, wow, the grace and just it was just, it was so beautiful to reflect on. And it just gave me more confirmation, more conviction and more like, okay, let's do this. And more, more obedience, all of that. It just, it takes time. And that's what I always tell people too. It's like, especially when you're new in your walk, it's hard. And you have, you have human things that, especially if you've been through trauma, that trusting is hard. Like it's too many, so many people have broken that trust. So many people, you know, have hurt you. So it's completely normal. And it's like, just, just be willing to just, you know, try and get up again and try again. And, and he'll show you, you just got to be willing. Yes. You, you said something earlier that actually just came back to me is that you, you know, whether it was you or somebody else, they didn't have the example, right? So being newer in your faith, whether you're new or you've been, I've pretty much been a believer almost my whole life. I was baptized when I was seven, but I didn't really get to have a relationship with the Lord and really know the Holy spirit up until a couple of years ago. Like that wasn't mm-hmm. taught. That wasn't talked about. That wasn't something yeah. at all. It was just very stiff and very like check off the box. And I'm like, if this is what this is, then like I'm out of here until I, once I left home, graduated college, I'm like, let me figure this out on my own. And I'm so glad that I did. And I didn't just take the, what I saw in my childhood or my parents, like we're going to church or doing the thing, whatever, you know, God met me in places. Cause I always kind of had a hunger of like, when I want to know something like, I'll go figure it out. Like when I want something, like I'm getting in there, like there's no stopping me. Like I'm a very determined person, which I'm sure has helped me in my relationship with the Lord. But then it's also been a catch 22 where there's times where I want things and he's like, no, no, not, not that. And I'm just like, what do you mean? And so it can be painful, but to your point, you know, it is never going to be easy, but it's always going to be worth it because when we just get things handed to us, it's just like, oh, okay, it's handed to us. Like then we kind of expect it. When you have to work yeah. for it and then you get this, this piece that surpasses all understanding like that right there, that's worth more than anything you could buy, anything anybody can give you anything at all. And so, um, I love that. I just love this conversation because I hope it's bringing somebody freedom of like, look, this is available to you. If you don't know what we're talking about, if it doesn't make sense, like just pray and just be like, Lord, I want more, show me more. He will, he will show up. And I just hope people really get to experience that, whether it's the first time for today or again today, because every day I want more (laughs) for me personally. Exactly. I love that. Yes, Ashley, this has been amazing. I am very excited for people to get to know you more, get to hear more of your podcast, what you get to do. So um, before we wrap up here today, is there anything you would like to share with people in addition to where they can connect with you if they want more? Yeah, so Pretty and Praise is pretty much on all streaming platforms. Um, So it is a podcast, but it is also a 501c3 nonprofit. So this is the beginning stages of what I feel like genuinely is a movement. And so check out prettyandpraise.com to see what I have going on with that. Um, Anyone that is basically a part of what I'm doing now or contributing in any capacity, it is literally helping us develop this ministry. We have a curriculum that is um, being developed, and it's specifically to help women that experience trauma and either became disconnected um, in their faith or just never gave their faith a chance because they didn't feel worthy. Um, That's something I resonated with. That's where I was. And so ultimately the goal is to break people free um, of that. And that's really what Pretty and Praise is really meant for. The podcast is really just a medium to be able to to meet people where they are behind closed doors, struggling with these things. Um, And then just Ashley Nicole Stone. I'm on Instagram. I share all my behind the scenes and things I have going on uh, as an entrepreneur and businesswoman. And uh, Kicking It Media Group is my media company. So that's where you can find out all the things. 
Awesome. Ashley, thank you so much. And thank you for just stepping out, doing what you're doing. There are so many people, so many women specifically that need this. And I just pray that the right ones, you know, find this episode, find you and be able to just experience that, that peace and that freedom that you're so graciously leading them, like in showing them here's what that looks like. So thank you for coming on the show today and sharing with us. Yes. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. It means the world to me that you would lean in, listen in, and be able to hear the value that's being shared on this show. Don't forget, if you love this episode, rate the show, leave me a review, be sure to share it with a friend, and don't forget to tag me on social media. I will definitely be giving you a shout out. Also, come say hi, drop in the DMs. I would love to be able to hear what stood out to you the most on the episode, and if there's any topics that you would like to hear on the show. We'll see you next time.